Hi. Welcome to episode 25 of Coach's Corner. I am Coach Justin. I am Coach Ethan. And at the time of this recording, it is the 4th of July. It is. The day and of. Independence Day, baby. So today's episode is going to be all about managing your time. Mm-hmm. How do, We're getting into travel season, so people are going to be traveling. They're going to be eating out more. They're going to be going to backyard barbecues and pool yep. parties. And this is the season... You know, in a perfect world, we spend spring kind of like leaning out. Yes, of winter course. winter bulk for winter men. Bulk. I mean, women too for sure. But like no. winter, <laughs> you get strong. Spring, yep, you with lean the out. Shirts on, so that by summer you're like yeah, you, you take off the shirt ready, and maybe. Shink, 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 shink. And so, but now, how do we maintain that physique throughout the summer so that way we don't just blow all of our progress? Yeah. And so, Ethan and I are going to talk about some tips and tricks to help you guys stay. Stay fit, or at least if you're if you're not fit yet, and we're trying to get fit, at least not get less fit as the summer Maintain. months. Maintain, yeah, and um, some tricks without having to necessarily like be a stickler to tracking every single calorie, um, but still keeping a, a keen eye on your food mm-hmm. and your lifestyle, so that way you can you know maintain some health as we get into the summer season. So, unquestionably, yeah. So this is going to be a, a hot episode. Very hot. So, so Ethan, 103 degrees. Do you have any travel plans this year, my man? Actually, this year I'm taking it easy. Nice. Because I've got a tremendous amount of travel in the beginning of next year. Really? Where? Yes, you know, I'm actually going to <laughs> Sri Lanka of all what places. What the hell are you going there for? You know, I would never have chosen to go there. Or... <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got roped into something? You yeah, do I'm going to some crumb bums wedding. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Totally. But... Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm engaged. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, we're getting married in Sri Lanka yep. on February 1st. Very excited for it. Yeah. Actually. It's going to be a crazy trip. That one's going to be a doozy. We're it, gonna, it will be a doozy. It's, it's, there's no way to get there in less than like 28 hours. It's <laughs> like a 40-hour travel <laughs> yeah. walk is yeah. is kind of yeah. expected. It's in wild. One way or another. Yeah. Right. It's definitely pretty wild. So I got that. I actually have another wedding in Nicaragua and then Dope. potential plans for some uh, trip to Oaxaca. That's huge, dude. That's all in the next. It would be all year? like the first quarter. Really, the Oaxaca trip for me is negotiable because it's Amanda's brother's fortieth birthday, and she okay. like has to go and is committed. Right. It would be a lot cheaper for her to go if I went with her to like split hotel costs, and mm. it's it's there. Mm. It's it's on the bottom of the tier list. Right, but right. it's available. It should be fun. I'm, well, that's stuff on my list. I, yeah, that's the other thing. Is like see. I would love to go and. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's at a nice resort, and it's this, and it's that. And so, all right, well, let's 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 talk about what like maybe you might find yourself as the listener getting into here with your travel. I imagine road trips. Yes. I imagine uh, maybe flying back to hometown. Um, That's I, I guarantee you the biggest one. Yep. You know, going see the folks and the old old friends, and mm-hmm. you know maybe just some like camping trips. I was gonna say camping trips. Mm-hmm. You know, weekend wine tasting weekends. But yes. Along, on the along those beach lines. Beach days. Totally. Or or uh, park days if you don't live near a beach. Well, let me kick it off with this because one of my new clients who I'm working with personally. He's, uh, his name's Gabe in case he listens. So he is a musician and he's doing a, 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 an event in, in Minnesota next week. And so he's like, Justin, everything's going great. You know, mm. he's, he's been with me for like a week and he's already down like four pounds, just cleaning up food choices. We're just kind of getting into like tracking calories and like focusing on getting him to hit a protein target. So on the one hand, he's really excited because he's for the first time he's seeing progress. Right, a little momentum being created. On the other hand, he's terrified because he's about to leave town for a week, and we all know how fragile it's those beginning stages yeah, are. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not yeah. rooted yet. It's, it's no, it can fall off just like that. Especially you know? when you're only a week or two in, it's like one week can can not only just set you back to where you were, but actually be like, even worse than <laughs> even when you started. Worse. Yeah, and and destroy all your habits that you're starting to put momentum on. So here's what I told him to do. I said, all right. You know, it's convention thing, so it's like he's uh, breakfast, you're on your own, and there's like kind of like a buffet type lunch, and then dinner, you're on your own. Right. But it's also a networking thing, so he's gonna be like having dinner and probably drinks. Some social component to it. So 
you know, it's unrealistic to think that you're not going to have a couple of drinks. It's, not, it's unrealistic to think that you're not going to want to participate. And so instead of yeah. trying to like fight against the current, it's like, here's what, I, here's the exact strategy I told him. Breakfast is just going to be coffee and protein. So wake up, have your coffee and have like a protein shake or even like a double protein shake. Like, yes. you know, like you're knock, like wipe that out. 70 grams. Out. Just yeah. yeah. You will not be hungry for a minute. Then lunch is going to be kind of like this, the, the staple. Lunch is going to be like the, mm. the big meal because, you know, you got to do your thinking in the afternoon. You want to stay sharp. And so I said, just take a plate and imagine it divided into thirds. One fist size of protein, think like a big ch pr uh, chicken breast or along those lines. One fist size of like a starch, so think uh, rice or sweet potato or beans or whatever, and then one fist size of veggies. So that would be a pretty hefty full size plate, but probably pretty low cal. Just avoid the dressing, the seasoning, the oils, and all right, that yeah, stuff. The, the fried foods. Yeah. And then a protein bar in the afternoon, maybe around three or four is the last afternoon, pick me up snack, mm. a couple hundred calories. And then dinner, just protein and veggies. Okay. Skip the carbs because you're probably going to have some drinks. And so in my program, we always minus alcohol calories from our carbohydrate intake. Right. But accounting for the social time. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So that way, like you're still eating two proper meals and then kind of like two protein snacks but then you know it's a trade-off you know because you can't have you can't eat uh everything you want whenever you want i mean if the you yeah, kind of have to practice a little restraint you have to i think you know it's, it's interesting hearing it because it's like what's coming to me just in my own mind as a reflection is like you just have to have a plan i think right Right, because it's the, the the whole saying: if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Yes, exactly. Right, and there's like, and, and almost like because of the momentum we were talking about, it's like the ability to just go off the rails and lose it all. So easy. It's so easy. It's, it's like it's like so easy. a switch goes off in people's mind. Like as soon as they Takes head to the airport, day. it's like oh, <laughs> like well, I'm at the airport. Oh yeah, like oh, I'm hungover, or or I had a, like a stressful day, and it's all understandable that those are for whatever reason, challenging moments to our grind, yeah. right? I mean, I, I get it, I've, I, I live them, but I think it is, the, it's like the understanding that some type of intention like has to be at play. And it's not to say that you have to be super strict and just eating your own food from the grocery store in your hotel room, right? But that like, at the same time, if you just let it all go, you're gonna let it all go. Yeah. Right. You have to have like a like one bungee cord. One it's tether. breaking. It's breaking out of all or nothing thinking. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay because it's like and it's beginners are notorious for this mm. like all or nothing thinking. It's like right. all right. Well, I'm either if, if I'm either gonna like be terrible to hang out with at this convention because I am <laughs> bringing my Tupperware with my chicken and rice yep. and my protein powder. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. And then I'm going to go home at five when it's over and not socialize. Right. Which, which, which what's the point of living at that point? Yeah. On the no other fun. end of the spectrum, it's like, all bets are off. Fuck it. I'm just going to go ham and you're getting bacon and eggs and pancakes. Continental and, breakfast. Yeah. Burgers and fries for lunch. And you're going to a steakhouse for dinner and drinking six bottles of wine or glasses. It's like, well, that's, you yeah. well, know that's what probably got you into this mess so but the answer is in the middle 100%. and it's just like allowing yourself to have a growth mindset because if you ask people mm. do you have a fixed mindset or do you have a growth mindset what do you think people are going to say oh well, i got a growth mindset <laughs> but then you see them you observe them and it's like dude you're going to be the exact opposite of what someone who who has a growth mindset would do right they might have flashing moments of growth but most often people operate out of a fixed mindset it, these like fitness is not a binary it's a continuum yeah, how much it's think of it as it's like analogous analogous to like saving money it, like anything is better than nothing right yes well if i can't save a thousand a month i won't save anything right well what if you save 500 like is that not like 200 like, like, is that not like good <laughs> like what are you talking about but if people right. think that way with 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 fitness and, and nutrition all the time it's wild it is. It's like one, you know, because you'll have, maybe you do go out to brunch and have all the bottomless mimosas and 
chicken and waffles, and then you're just like, oh, what have I done? All right, fine. I'll just have some more pizza for lunch. Yeah, fuck it. I already chopped off one toe. Might as well. And, and even the if the day off. goes to waste, it's it's this like perpetual momentum machine where it's like, okay, fine. Maybe the whole day went to shit. That happens. But then it's like Monday rolls around and you're like, well, fucked yesterday up. So I'm just going to, you know, yeah, give give it all out. We all have that internal dialogue with ourselves. We all have that voice that's going, oh, you're kind of hungover today. Maybe you should just like eat something that you want to like soak it up or whatever like the bullshit narrative that you <laughs> right, tell yourself it's just, it's just psychologically going to satisfy it means you nothing yeah, you know so there's, there's no soaking up no, anything it's just that it's you gone. feel like shit yeah and this is going to make you quote feel better which it might like it might be like oh wow this is so satisfying to eat this fried chicken sandwich but that's what it is it's but like, just and then like all these like bad habits and decisions just start compounding stagging up. and you don't even know who you are anymore and it's just this like jumbled bundle of condition <laughs> vi- v- vicious cycles you know <laughs> like yep. you have no idea just, what's up from down like, whoa, 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 whoa. so so i think like the takeaway then in this is like we want to have fun we're, we, we train Wait, yeah because we're not bodybuilders but we don't have we're not stepping on stage yeah. we just want to look good and have fun and enjoy our lives well, and be healthy 100 yeah, percent. and it's like the opposite end of that spectrum it's like letting it all go and us you know talking about that human condition one it's about relatability it's like we all have it even yeah. the people that are the most disciplined have it they've just overcome it and so i think it's like one it's like recognizing that we're all in it together and you're not special <laughs> yeah in a way oh you are not yeah no everybody anybody who thinks that like they're not special or and they're not special they're special <laughs> anybody who thinks they are 40, special. 40 and slip yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh anybody who thinks they're special it's like you know at the end of the day nobody defies physics if you stick your hand in a fire, you're going to get burned. Yes, that's just the way it's going right? to be. Yep. If you if you try to walk across water, you're going to sink into it. Have you ever seen Chris Angel? <laughs> <laughs> and if you eat less than your body burns, you're going to lose weight. You're going to lose weight. Yeah. The opposite of that is true as well. Yeah. And so these are just the it's law of thermodynamics. It's the facts of life. No one defies physics, and so it's like all we have to do is. Look at it as like there's going to be seasons in life. I like mm. there is a guy that I follow for a minute, and he'd always speak like, the, "What's the season that you're in right now?" And I love that framing because it's like, okay, I'm in a season where, right now, <clears throat> like you said, for example, you're not traveling for a minute, right? Yeah. You're just kind of hanging around. So like, you know, this could be an opportunity, a mm. season where you're, I'm not going to be pulled away from my home base for months. Where I'm in control of my you know? house, where I can choose yeah. at least what's happening with my food. I can cook, I can do all right. these things. And you know? so it's like this season might be one of travel for some people where it's like, okay, well, now is not the time necessarily to like, if you got like, it's something going on every single month, then, you know, what can you do? It's not, uh, well, I can't do the, my my 100% so I might as well not even participate. It's like, no, 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 no. What can you do? It's like turning it from a binary to a continuum. And it's like, like the, Gabe, my client, for example, how many days are you going to be there? Five, five scoops of protein in a Ziploc bag and bring it with you. Five protein bars, bring it with you. Mm-hmm. You're just setting yourself up for success. Do you know the restaurant that you feel like you're going to be hanging out at? What if you pull up the menu and spent 90 seconds just taking a look at the three or four restaurants menu that you're about to go to just so you can start that little process in your mind of like oh i'm gonna get the grilled chicken sandwich when i go even if it's in the uber ride over yeah there's that opportunity right and so it's it's like again the, the the two ends of the spectrum of like letting it all go and like not being that person that doesn't enjoy life or is the guy with the tupperware at the convention, yeah. right? Like, that's unrealistic. I don't think most people are going to want to... Like, why go on vacation if your vacation looks exactly the same as your home life? Totally. Right? There's a component of that. But it's like, at the same time, to, to that point, right? Even on the, the Uber ride over, you can just look at the menu of the restaurant you're going to and without question, in a 30-second scan, probably be like, best choices, yep. appetizer... That just in general, right? You can just see just right off the bat. Totally. Like, like an ounce of preparation. I said that wrong. Like an ounce of... of, of, of. 
Uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. All right. I have to edit that last one. <laughs> An ounce of prevention is well, worth a pound of cure. <laughs> and in this instance, it's like the prevention is just taking a peek. Okay, just mapping it out. What is this four day road trip look like? Where are we gonna go? Can I is it is it so crazy to bring a cooler with like, you know, some pre made snacks and protein shakes and shit like that in there just so you're not like tempted to just go and get a double double with fries on the road because you're, you know, hungry, you're and, hungry yeah and you're just like it's oh man and then you hungry. rash line because you're like well i don't have anything else and i'm hungry so i guess i have to yep. but had you act but if this is important to you if fitness and if health is who you want to be weight, if some component of this journey, you have to understand that this is an yeah. identity you possess now it's yeah. not something you do you know monday through thursday and then you get fucking blow it out of the water Friday through Sunday, like, cause you will never see progress. Yeah. But it's like, okay, we're going to have dinner at this restaurant tonight. I'm going to have two or three glasses of wine. So then maybe it stands to reason breakfast might just be a protein shake. A Lunch meal. might be a, a, a turkey sandwich and some veggie because you know, you're going to be, con you're plowing down 12 to 1500 calories for dinner and yep. you have to and if nothing gives, then you're going to be over and you're going to come back from your vacation frustrated because you blew it. 100%. What was it? Was it as a, an ounce of prevention is a pound of cure? Yeah. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. What I also, my mind was like, an ounce of preparation is, is worth a pound of repair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I was right. Like, yeah, right. I, was like, I don't think it needs to be edited. I was like, I think there's still value there. It even, you know, it happened to me yesterday. So in the in a previous episode, we talked about habits and food timing, and I talked about how I eat late at night, mm -hmm. most often because I get home from work. So yesterday, I was going to an evening massage that I hadn't had in a while. They've been traveling. Again, in case you guys don't know, Ethan gets massages every day. Every day, <laughs> at least once. He's a day. so rich. <laughs> <that was> <laughs> he gets a massage every Weekly day. Weekly standing massage appointments. <laughs> multiple therapists, yeah. by the way. Mm -hmm. They all they all offer something different. <laughs> yeah. yeah, mostly just fix his mindset. <laughs> yeah, that would be. <laughs> but I, I was I was stopping at Trader Joe's on the way to pick up a few things, and it was funny because it was just happenstance. But I didn't validate my ticket, so I had to go back up, which is mm. annoying. It was yeah. what it was. We've all been there. But in that moment of like checking out to getting in my car, I just became starving. And I knew I hadn't eaten a lot that day. Mm. I knew. And so I had like a double protein scoops in my car. Oh, shit. So I was ready. To, 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 you know, it was going to be about a 40-minute drive. They're, they're, they're in the Palisades or out, out there a little bit, which is fine. So I was ready, but I knew that wasn't going to be enough. Like I, I, I was like hungry, hungry. I just did not have food prepped that day, and my day just went on. And so I really had not eaten a lot that day at all. You know, I'd, I'd had some protein. I had like a yogurt, but I was just like, I was fucking mm -hmm. hungry. I needed yeah. a meal. Right. And this protein shake just wasn't going to do it. I was about to go do a, a couple's massage. I was going to do two massages back to back. And I was like, I just can't. This isn't going to work. So I went, as I went back into Trader Joe's to validate my ticket, I was like, I need to eat. I'm like... I'm at that place where I'm gonna fucking pull over and get a double double. Like it's mm -hmm. like the hunger is hitting me now in this magical 15 minute window. Oh yeah. Where I'm just like, this is not gonna work. And if I know I could push through and just have the protein shake, but on that drive home, I'm gonna want to get the double double. I know when I get home, I'm gonna just eat fucking everything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna eat the food I got prepped. I'm gonna eat some rice crackers. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get some fucking dumplings out of the freezer. Like I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's just gonna it's just gonna go off. And so I was like, okay, this isn't gonna work. So I went and I looked and I was like, I need something. I didn't have time. So I went to the little wrap section because I was like, I need to be able to something that's cold and immediate. And so I got a wrap. But what I also did was sat there and looked at every fucking wrap's protein content. Mm -hmm. And I was like, which one has the highest protein? And it just so happened to be that the one that had the highest protein was also like one of my favorite flavors. Mm. But I was ready to just eat whatever one it was because none of them are going to taste bad. Like none yeah. of them are going to be like, oh, ugh. This is right. tuna salad. Arr. But it was like still those kind of decisions. And so it's just that to me is like a good example of like it wasn't my best. I wasn't prepared per se. The, the moment happened. Mm -hmm. But I still made the best decision that I could. Totally. In the moment. I still prioritized protein. I made sure that I got something in. And you know, I guess what? When I got home, I only ate half of the food that I had prepped. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the takeaway. It, it's Okay, so maybe you do have to go through a drive-through. Well, every fast food restaurant has like a grilled chicken sandwich now. Right. 
and you might want the big juicy bacon guac <laughs> burger, but yeah. we're talking the difference between like a 1500 calorie gut bomb that you're going to immediately regret yep. versus a 600 calorie chicken grilled chicken sandwich that is maybe you know isn't as good look good as the burger that your husband or wife is eating next to you but you're gonna finish it and you'll be like you know i feel pretty good actually yeah and it was it's gonna taste high good. protein locale yeah. you're on track and those are the those are the decisions and th that's what i mean when i say this is an identity now that you have this is there's no going back like because as mm -hmm. soon as you break that seal and you and you do have the the 1500 calorie gut bomb the next one's just easier to do and then yep. the next one after that is easier to do and next thing you know you're right back to where you started <laughs> in the so cycle. it's like just being aware f feeling the hunger feeling the emotion feeling the frustration feeling the defeat and the overwhelm and then understanding that you're actually not the person feeling it you're the one observing it and just punching back a level and just seeing these emotions kind of drift by like clouds and be like, you know what? B deep breath in, I'm going to choose my option instead of just reactively, you know, grabbing whatever I can because I'm ravenous. We're not, right. we're not feral beasts rumma run rummaging through the forest anymore. Like we have a moment <laughs> to like just think. Yes. And in that moment, that pause, as Cashew would say, it's just that pattern interrupt, creating a little space between pause, stimulus yeah. and, response. and response. So you have stimulus. I'm fucking hungry. I worked all day. I got to drive 40 minutes. Ah, I'm frustrated. That's the stimulus. I smell it. I smell the fries. Tripwire. Boom. Triggered. Response. I'm just going to fucking eat. I don't care. What if, but if we, but there's no gap between stimulus and response, we're just doomed to repeat this vicious cycle over and over and over again. But if we can just observe these emotions and go, okay, like what you just did. All right, let me just take 30 seconds here. Okay, whoa, no protein in that one. Yeah. Double, I... the, double the calories. Oh, great, okay, this one's got 30 grams, only 350 calories, cool. You know what, this one. It's like that. those decisions, that, that is your trajectory. That's it. And when you look back over the course of a year and you've made 50 of those decisions or 500 of those decisions, like that could be the difference between you like going on your next vacation, feeling super confident and maybe even, dare I say, slipping into a bathing suit on the beach right. versus you not wanting to go, making excuses to just wait in the car, being under the umbrella, you know, kind of not wanting to participate. It's, yeah, because it, it doesn't have to be that bad. Like, so I got a buffalo chicken wrap that had a blue trees dressing and the dressing added like 120 calories right it's one of those little ouncey cups mm -hmm. and of, of course i used the dressing but instead of just like slamming the wrap in there and just like mm -hmm. scooping it all up i was like okay how minimal amount of a dressing can i do to apply the flavor and get the satisfaction of this blue cheese buffalo chicken wrap yeah and i literally probably used like a third of the dressing totally right so and it's and it's 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 that's like 80 calories 90 calories of the 120 edition mm -hmm. that i was able to forego and the wrap was equally satisfying i didn't need like gobs of mouthfuls of dressing on this thing yeah. flavor wise it was it, it was actually really strong and i was totally fine you know and it's just that Always little like thing. i'm gonna really intentionally fucking dip this thing in here as i'm driving and it's like okay you kind of get to have your cake and eat it too a little bit i got the 30 it was 34 grams of protein in that wrap i was amazed Sick. it was great and like that's the thing too when you're making your own food, when you're ordering food and it comes with this like little, you know, ounce and a half of like dressing, challenge yourself. Like yeah. Tanya and I have been doing these recipes and these recipes are calling for like three ounces or three tablespoons of olive oil and like, you know, cheese and cream. And we're like, what would happen if we cut all that in, in by, by two thirds? And so we just had one third of all those ingredients and it turns out it still tastes great it's and it's like you don't, enjoyable and like that's just hundreds of calories less per day that you're consuming and for most people that probably is your deficit yep. and so when you're on a road trip when you're traveling when you're on your next vacation maybe and you're at a restaurant like make those little seemingly inconsequential choices that really add up big time over the long haul. If you're gonna have fries, grab one fry at a time. Mm -hmm. Don't not eat the fries, but just just literally mm -hmm. pick up a single French fry. Yeah, once you start grabbing like four at a time, oh, right it's now, so you're easy just... to do. You want to get that jammed <laughs> wad of potatoes in, and then you go because because when you before you do four, now it's like a shovel, and you can just like plow like a whole ounce of ketchup on it. <laughs> and look, I get it. And so it's again, it's like it's like not don't eat the French fry. It's just. 
some little modifications that can yeah. all add up. And so, okay, let's get practical because we've talked about it. So, okay, have a plan. Yeah. So we're talking about travel, Balance of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So just taking a minute <laughs> to think through where you're going to be and then just making even just a mental note of like, okay, here are the restaurants we're going to go to. Here's what I can order. And then just, I think, some easy go-tos. Like, is there a way to just get like mm. the half chicken yeah, instead say, the roasted of roasted chicken. You get a roasted chicken at, at like dinner. A steak instead of the fucking ribeye. Right. You because know, avoid fried appetizers. Like get a shrimp cocktail. Get a hamachi or a yellowtail mm-hmm. crudo. Get you know a tuna pokey or just you know doesn't anything of that nature. It doesn't have to be seafood, but over calamari. Totally. That's fried. You know that's a simple choice. Yeah, I would say like. Like dinner time, do your best to stick with protein and veg. Yeah. If you can just omit carbs or or just like reduce the carbs, you're probably going to be okay because if you're like me and you're like most people, you probably want to have a drink or two at a nice restaurant anyways or at dinner with your family anyways. Yep. So then you're just going to think of it as like, okay, I can do my roast chicken. We can get some like broccolini or whatever, and then I can have a glass or two of wine, maybe a bite or two of the ice cream for dessert. Yeah. Not too shabby. That's a fair trade-off, I think. Yeah. Lunch, maybe get in like a protein and a carb and a veggie. But uh, I would say just as a rule of thumb, avoid big like stews and and things that you have no fucking clue what's in there. No portion controllability. Right. Just look for like a protein, a veg, and a carb. Yeah, differentiated. Mm-hmm. And then breakfast, if you can just do a protein and coffee, you're probably going to be okay. And if you just did that, like you're probably going to come back fine. You're probably going to be okay, yeah. You yeah. know, I think it's like it's like have a plan. <clears throat> don't, don't forget that you've chosen this path. Portion control. Think about what you're eating ahead of time. Unless it's winter, go get your steps in. Go for a walk in the novel area. And by the way, even if it is winter, you can get a walking pad for like $100 on Amazon now. Not while you're traveling, though. You're going to bring uh, it. That's true. I guess. <laughs> but if you're not, yeah. You All know, right. I will, well, yeah, you're fly, right, you're, check you're, you're, your walking you're, pad. In yeah, there, yeah you know, put it in, in a brief. All right, all electronics out. <laughs> it's like Desperado. <laughs> you just, you just, you got your, honestly, you could bring your bands, your walking pad. <laughs> Your yoga mat. Well, the, and like, the, the bands actually make sense. But yeah. yeah, you know, I think it's just like, don't forget. And I think, because that's another one for me is like, it's just so easy to let my movement go. Like when I go visit my mom, it's oh, yeah. winter. You don't budge. It's East Coast. Yeah, I put my pajamas on when I wake up. I might even be sleeping in them. I just get up and mm-hmm. I, eat, I eat that big ass breakfast that she cooks. And then I'm just like, mm-hmm. next thing you know, it's five o'clock and you it's have It's time a, for dinner. It's time for a drink. You're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, what happened? Yeah, I know 100%. holidays are like that. But but yeah, but for summer travel, I think like just if, if being fit and healthy is something that you want in your life and you want this person, you want to become that version, yeah. then taking a second and doing what fit and healthy people do by like thinking through, okay, well, it's not a binary, like I'm either fit or I'm, or I'm either being healthy or I'm not. It's like, how much can you be healthy? Yeah. And that can be making sure that if you do go through drive through, you, you order the grilled chicken sandwich versus the double double. If you are at a restaurant, you maybe just skip the carbohydrates with dinner because you're never going to have a glass of wine anyways. Mm-hmm. And it, all these things might seem silly, but again, no, they really up. fucking add up. Even and I think it's like, even if you can keep your toe in the water, because I think back to the beginning of the podcast or our discussion, when we were talking about how it just is so easy for a couple of decisions to spiral out. Yeah, definitely. Right. Even if 85% of it's lost, like even if that is the situation because of travel and circumstance, but you still like maintain the commitment, mm-hmm. even if it's a, it's just, the, the, even if it's just 10,000 steps a day or mm-hmm. even a 20 minute walk a day, that's like the very bare minimum. There's still some psychological like foot in the door. Never, it's, 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 you it's, never it's, let yeah, it go exactly. all the way. And even if that's the best you could do, and even if that was your best in that moment, whatever it is, you still at least like, keep your like hand on the line you don't let it go all the way you don't you never break the chain of habit yes it's never like you never tr- sever the chain of habit even if the habit is trying i guess or just like you know it's like you're still putting the effort forward right to never never not do your best because it's going to vary from day to day and, and I the think- irony is is that it takes a minute you know we're not talking like you have to sit there and like 
you know, track every calorie or expect yourself to know everything you're going to eat on a week long vacation. But just like taking a couple of minutes while you wake up in your hotel or wherever you're at and you're having your coffee instead of looking at Instagram, instead of reading the news, mm. what if you just like, like just looked at the menu of the restaurants you're going to go to that day or talk to your partner or spouse or friends? Like, so what are we doing? Where are we going to go? And just thinking through like, okay, what I, I found a lot of personal accountability by calling out my, my own, the demons on my shoulder. Like what would bad Justin want to do? He mm -hmm. would want to like fucking, you know, go ham for breakfast, go ham for dinner, drink a bunch of wine, have a big dessert. And like, if I just call myself out, Interesting. it's almost like, Ooh, okay. But then the, it's, now almost, it's almost easier to like back into it from there. It's like, exposing the worst version of yourself <laughs> and good. then you like can kind of like step backwards into whatever like the middle ground is for that day could be so i'm not going to yeah. bring my own tupperware to the party but i'm also not just going to like plow through a bunch of like i'm not gonna get the lumberjack breakfast yeah with, yeah. with the bloody mary either just like ah oh, i guess i and also like it's so corny but why is this important to you well that's yes why well i want like for me it's mostly just vanity but like i want to fucking be 40 years old with a six pack. Yeah. And if I'm eating fucking flapjacks and bacon, like I'm just, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I'm just not going to get that. And so it's like, all right, veggie omelet. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. And I eat it and guess what? I'm fine. It's yeah. It's, and it's cause you, cause in the end what'll happen is you'll, you'll leave the vacation or you'll leave the day. And next thing you know, it's like, ugh, what have I done? Yeah. It's like, like you're, you're back on, in that airport yeah. on the way back and you're just like, well, that was a week. <laughs> like, yeah. you, just, you just know. You just know. Like, well, and also I think too is like. Erased it all. Just like etch oh, yeah. everything And it's never worth it. You always regret it. You know you're going to regret it because you've regretted it every year you've ever done it. Like you know this already, right? <laughs> it's just like how many times you want to learn that same fucking lesson before you finally clicks. Yeah. But it's like indulgence are only truly enjoyable after we practice a little restraint because if all we ever do is indulge then Where then the hedonistic adaptation we just adapt to only being an indulgent and that's just the baseline now yeah but if we go through seasons bringing it full circle where we do practice restraint for mm. a month or six weeks or 12 weeks because we're leading up to an occasion where we can allow ourselves to indulge. A, you're not going to indulge that hard because you've worked so hard now that you don't even want to go blow it. But also B, when you do sit back at that beautiful beach cabana and you have your fucking cocktail and you're looking out over the water, you go, no chain here. I fucking earn this. Yes, um, I can be fully present. Yes. Fully enjoyable. Right. Yeah. So... Well, I'm going to eat some hot dogs later. Yeah, I'm about to go slam fucking <laughs> <laughs> some cookies. Shotgun, yeah. shotgun of beer. Yeah, well, Ethan, got, Ethan and I got to go shotgun some some IPA. So uh, we got to wrap this episode up. But yeah, so that was it, guys. I hope that helps. Yep. Um, every year, it stands to reason you're going to have uh, summer travel. You're going to have holidays. You're going to have birthdays. So instead of, instead of waiting to figure things out when life ceases to be life, let's, let's learn how to navigate through that by looking at these inevitabilities as an opportunity to practice who you would be at your higher self, this person you're trying to become, what would they, what kind of decisions would they make in these inevitabilities? Because that's how we actually ever, you know, grow. Couldn't say it better. So there you have it. Have a happy 4th of July, and Indeedly we'll catch you doodly. next time. Peace, Peace out. Bye-bye.